morning. Good morning again, Mayor and members of council. I'm Bill Dan Handelman with Portland Cop Watch. And uh, I wanted to testify about this uh, item, proposing to fund two more Project Respond mental health workers riding with Portland Police. While we're not here to address the idea of the teaming up of social workers with law enforcement, we do want to raise a few concerns about this item and some of its broader implications. First and foremost is that the expansion of this program is part of the agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice around their excessive force findings regarding Portland police and people in mental health crisis. While we cry out, what do we want, justice, and when do we want it now, and bemoan the slow pace at which change ordinarily occurs, we are concerned that many aspects of the agreement are being implemented before Judge Michael Simon has held a fairness hearing and entered the agreement into the court records. Other examples abound of the city jumping ahead to implement the plan, one of the most recent of which is the auditor circulating a job description for complaint investigators to be hired with the Independent Police Review Division. We certainly have been supportive of the idea of IPR doing its own investigations over the years, but suggested that their investigators be funded with dollars originally allocated to police internal affairs as a means to end the decades of long practice of police investigating the police. The project response solution similarly could be could benefit from community input to address concerns and even if the council moves forward with this we hope to hear a stated understanding that if the judge approves changes the agreement the city will work to implement those changes rather than saying we've already dealt with that and here's how uh, the second concern is the now deeply disconcerting integral relationship between the service provider cascadia behavioral health care and the bureau particularly around a controversial case of an officer involved shooting in May 2010, officers pulled over young Keaton Otis because they thought he looked like a gangster wearing a hoodie on a warm spring day. He didn't seem right driving a nice Toyota, which it turned out was his mother's car. Oh, did I mention that it was the gang enforcement team and that Keaton Otis was African American? Perhaps that played into the traffic stop. Anyway, as you all know, the traffic stop ended with Keaton Otis dead and 23 police bullets in him, and Officer Chris Burley being wounded by one or two, it's still unclear, bullets to his legs. Burley had been at Otis's driver's side door trying to extract him by, among other things, punching him in the face. Officer Burley is now a member of the Cascadia Board of Directors, whose chair is Felicia Otis Keaton's mother. We did not realize that Captain Donner Henderson, who's now an assistant chief, was previously on Cascadia's board. Uh, and I'll just pause here to say that she also was involved in encouraging TriMet Transit Police to um, take in people by any means necessary, which could have led to the death of James Chassie, and she was never investigated for that. Um, while there's a strong argument for the police to have a better understanding of mental health issues, it is deep concern the Bureau working its way through uh, findings of unconstitutional practices is helping guide the area's largest mental health provider. Uh, 